Good afternoon, Ujambo, Buenos Aires. I hope everyone is in all in good spirits. Hope everyone is doing well. And uh, much love and respect to the excellencies and presidents, leaders, chiefs, kings, and queens all over Africa. Love is given to y'all and respect for me and the Nubian people. First, I would like to say I 100% agree with the Kenyan president, President Roto. I also agree with the outlook that President Kangami had from Rwanda and so many others. I would like to first say that I have 100% faith in our continent and in our people. And also, I want to commend every president in Africa and every leader presently because one thing I admire about you all is what has been developed and it's been developed through a foreign language. I keep that in mind. Language is very important, especially when it comes to writing laws and narratives. And I think you all did an incredible job. And I would like to commend you for that, for what you have done. I know we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. There is no human that walk on earth that is perfect. But I will commend you for that because it has been a very difficult role for me to learn certain things within the uh, language of English and what I've had to learn according to laws and legalese. Before I talk about the laws and legalese, I will first like to bring to our attention something I heard an African leader say or he brought up recently when it comes to our sovereignty as well as when it comes to our identity. Now I want us to keep in mind this is for the Africans that's in South America, the Africans in Africa, the Africans in Europe as well as the Africans that's now in America. This is not for the black Americans and this is no offense to the black Americans but the black Americans has put pride within the word black. So I have no issue with that if that's what they choose and comply. But for all Africans spread it abroad this is not something that we need to agree upon. When we agree upon to say we are black, even though we come in all different melanated shades, we are, a, we are complying, excuse me, to a commercial entity. This commercial entity, if we comply to it, will block you from your natural resources. So it's not only not wise to comply to a color code, it would not make logical sense to comply to a color code wherever you go on this planet. This color code will be reducing us and our capability as a human. It will not produce anything but reduce us to a commercial item 
instead of a human being. If I have a black television, if I have a black camera, I have just given you the description of the item of the camera and the description of the item of the television. If I say I am a black male, which I am not, but if I comply to that, then I'm telling everybody outside of our ethnic group, treat me legally as a black item. A black item is not a lie. A black item cannot have human rights. I want us to also have a clear understanding that the identity of black is usually forced upon us by other ethnic groups. Because when you, when you represent your nationality, that comes with a nation, a landmass, and a flag and banner. Being a commercial item does not come with these other lawful attachments. So it's no offense to a certain group. We, we're thinking much more broad, right? We're thinking more critical now. We're thinking more logical. We're thinking with more intellect. So it's time that we apply this to our conversations. Our conversations need to be on the intellectual level. And I'm referring to it as myself as well. I'm not excluded from anything that I say. I want to be 100% clear. So nobody does not think there is a higher standard and a lower standard for us African descent collectively. Also, I would like to remind you, these things were given to us in America as well as Europe on paperwork as well as Africa. We just have to take the time, read it, and understand both spectrums. Now, within these spectrums, we cannot let reverse psychology outsmart us any longer. That would not be wise. Let me tell you why. And this is why other people think it's okay to make a mockery of us and our people, which is not. And then before I make this statement, I want to say once again, I think we've done a great, incredible job so far as Africans. Because different superpowers and forces collectively went against us as a people. It was like a handicap match. Is it fair when there's one against two? Or when there's one against three? Or when there's one against four? The ratio and the odds show that the odds were against us from the beginning. As well as we had to try to build ourselves up and capitalize through another foreign language. Now, to prolong what I was saying about categories of who we are, we got one ram we got to realize. We got the ram of business and commerce on this hand. Then we have another ram, which pertains our sovereignty and nationality. When it comes to our people, they bring these two entities together. And they try to outsmart us this way. They say we're only supposed to have a limit for commercialism. Then we have no standard at all for our nationality and sovereignty. But on the contrary, we're supposed to create our limit for commercialism and business and commerce. And on the other end, we're supposed to empower more our nationality and sovereignty. 
So that way our nationality and sovereignty overpowers the commercialism. Not another ethnic group's nationality and sovereignty overpowers our commercialism. They have used this tactic in numerous ways and numerous occasions. I will give you another example, which is completely insane, but we have allowed it, but we should not allow it anymore. A South African can look like a European, and a South African can look like an African. They can both have the commercial identity of South Africa, but how should that be measured? Remember, we have to start motioning in a time and an era where there's a separation of business and commerce on this side, and then there's another separation of geopolitics, geography, sovereignty, and nationality on this side. We do not need to combine the two, because then we will not have a maximum amount of freedom. Now, back to the topic at hand. The issue is not the identity of both parties who are South African, but the problem is both is categorized under commercial entities. To stop this horrific delusion that they applied on us over the decades and centuries, why not have a measurement? One thing we should always be sense. able to depend on, accuracy. And this is not new. One example. We taught this in our there should be no delusion or confusion. Mathematics. If a Caucasian, European, African, or you want to label it South African, there should be no confusion where they come from. Let's use mathematics and science. If the genetics mathematically says the measurement is a greater extent of European blood, that individual who's in the commercial location, South Africa, should be known as a European. If a South African with a greater amount of African blood is in their veins, let's use that measurement. There should be no confusion there. And why should we do this? Well, they did the same to our people. They did it to our people in Europe, and they also applied it to the African descents in America during the Willie Lynch era. One drop of African blood made an individual labeled black by commercial commerce entity. So one or more drops of European blood with a higher genetic measurement of European, that individual should be named as their ethnic European highest value of number or numerology through number and science. That same measurement should be measured of the pigment of melanin under their skin. The same tactics should be measured through the pigment melanin that's measured through the kinkiness and the molecules of their hair. Of course, more African descent people have stronger, thicker molecules of melanin in their hair. So, it gives it less gravity. The more density is because of less molecules and melanin in their hair. Usually their hair lays down. We can measure that from the darkest African to the less melanated European and every ethnicity in between. 
does it make enough sense to all of us to say, why not apply this? They applied it to us, different tactics used by math and science, and it was not accurate. So why not use accurate math and science to make less confusion? And why do we use these measurements? Well, I find it to be very credible and used, if not in every country, almost every country. For an example, in America, you have three political parties. Republican, Democrat, Independent. Now, usually, the Independents, they get the least amount. Between the Democrat and Republican, it's usually decide who gets the second highest amount. But which number is credible, let's apply it. If we had to measure the measurement, whoever has the highest amount, whoever has the longest measurement. So we apply it on our daily basis in life. We apply it during voting in every country. Let's stop the confusion and just use mathematics and science. Let's measure it. It's been applied on our people. Now it's time for us to use our sophistication. It's time for us to apply our intelligence. And we apply the same thing for our people and anybody who wants to apply in our rules and our lanes within our construct. That construct during the Willie Lynch era, it consistently talked about a drop of blood. They never said if you was light brown, golden brown, dark brown, blackish brown, blackish blue. They never said that. They said if you had a drop of African blood and they measurement of what they viewed of a melanated person. Okay, then let's play their game. But let's do it accurate and let's dissolve the reverse psychology. The only thing that separates all of us African descents is what we've been taught mentally through our environment and location and our tongue. I may have a stronger accent than the average American. It may be an African that may have a stronger accent than me. It may be an African that have a stronger Latino accent who's been raised in Brazil. It may be an African who have a different accent who was raised in Europe. But all of these things were embedded in us based upon our environment and circumstances. But what connects us is genetics. Can we, st can we please start having a measurement of genetics to prove who we are? Let's stop the confusion. Let's stop the guessing. And let's stop the mind games, please. We shouldn't have to put so much focus and envy and energy and the time on skin. My skin is a clear elastic, just like an Asian person's skin. A European skin is a clear elastic, like a Latino person's skin. I've never seen me or any other individual who had chapped lips and their lips peeled and the skin that peeled off their lips actually was black and white. Please, please, let's stop the mind games, okay? Please, we're adults. Let's conversate like mature adults and let's have a real dialogue. All of our skin is a clear elastic. 
The measurement of melanin under the skin determines how dark an individual is or not. And the melanin of measurement within the molecules in our hair determines the particles, how dark and thick and the texture it is. Let's stop with the mind games, please. And I said it with love and respect. I don't have the patience for mind games. I'm very open to talk to civilized adults, any ethnic group. And of course, I'm very open to talk to the excellencies that I love and respect so much in Africa and other Caribbean nations. We want to have strong dialogue strategic, smart conversations. Let's raise the bar higher. Let's push the standard more. So can we get past the skin thing? Our skin is a clear elastic. Let's take the measurement under the skin and let's have an accurate measurement. We come from Africa. And I am very prideful and proud of the country and the history I come from in my bloodline. But I'm also very proud of our continent as a whole. I love it dearly. I love our people dearly. I may can't deal with all of our people, but that does not mean that I hate them. I do not hate them. I may despise their ways. So to keep everyone safe, I may just avoid them, but I do not hate none of my people. I want to be 100% clear with that statement. Within this conflict, within Sudan, I hope it brought the right proper attention. That it's not so much our people that's the issue, but it's outside super forces. We know the conflict, we know the issue, but I would like to mention some things that's been stated about not just our land, Sudan or Nubia, but Africa as a whole that was stated by Arabic Muslim people. And I find it very disrespectful because they're making these statements on our continent. First. The Tunisia president consistently insult African people in our continent when they can go back to Saudi Arabia. The Arabic soccer player from Morocco said he was winning the soccer cup in Qatar for the pride of the Arab countries and nations. And he separated himself from Africa, though Morocco is in Africa. Egyptian staffs consistently says they do not agree with the African descent of dark melanated hue people are the original pharaohs and we all know yeah, that I we know were it. because I come from that blood no matter who tried to invade, my father taught me who he no was who tried to my grandfather taught me who he was and they taught me who I was and I know who I was and I can confirm and prove it by genetics science and math and so did my forefathers and our pharaoh forefathers and four mothers. So I know who I am, but I do not want the confusion to other ethnic groups to not know who we are as Nubians, but not just as Nubians, but all of us Africans. I know how we have a very great rich history, but Africa does, period. Africa does 100%. You had kings and queens and great chiefs in West Africa, South Africa, Central Africa, 
North Africa, was full of great rich history all over Africa, not just East Africa. But I strongly believe a lot of emphasis was placed on East Africa because of the colonization. And people who don't look like us want that credibility. We have such a great history that everybody else wants to claim it. And if we're not careful and strategic, and we don't speak up for the truth, and we create our own history and our own narrative, our children and offspring will grow up believing a deceitful lie. Can we allow that? Can we afford to allow that another 2,000, 3,000 years? We got to have pride in who we are. We got to have pride in our continent. Now I'm speaking to the Nubian people in all Africa, spread it in Africa, the continent. And every African who represent an African flag and African history proudly. We must know who we are, represent who we are, and be proud of who we are. If they can be proud of a lie, we should be proud of the truth. We have great kings like Massa Musa from West Africa, Shaka Zulu, and I can go on and on and on. But I just say that to say, look what, look what we get today in 2023. A great history, rich history that we have collectively, and everybody else wants to bombard it and overpower it. We cannot allow that to happen another 23,000 years. We cannot allow this to continue and think it's okay. Matter of fact, we're not going to allow it to continue. We will not allow this to prolong these deceitful lies that will not be smart and it's not accurate. Remember now, we're going off science and math and accuracy. The measurement of things. The measurement of who we are. So that way there's no confusion. If there's an Arabic in Africa, and he says he's born in Africa, but his genetic measurement says he's more Saudi Arabia than Morocco, then that individual needs to go based off the measurement of that accurate genetic. So this not only benefits us within our identities, but it benefits us to debunk the lie that any Arabic or European descent want to say. You're not going to play these games. I got high respect and high regards for Elon Musk. I think Elon Musk is a very smart man. I think he's a very wise businessman. And I also follow his method. Elon Musk said he succeeds by not taking deals. He create and build things. I'm the same way. I don't make these statements every year saying I don't take stimulus checks and government and loans. I don't say this for braggadocious reasons. Huh? I say this to prove to our people that we can do it without their help. And also prove to other countries when it comes to sitting at our table for business and negotiations we raise the standard and we create the situation nobody's going to keep coming to our table and telling us how it should go for our life and our land and continent we got to be the negotiators we are the most valuable to us as an asset in our continent we have to cherish that not no one else we should cherish that more than anyone else. And we should take that very, very serious. Very serious. Also, I would like to say, if you notice, the French president, Macron, I've noticed, in the African island, Mayat, he's forcing Africans out. The times we're coming across is going to come within two things that's going to separate us from a lot of people. Power and ownership. 
Now, what I think the French president is doing, morally, I think it's wrong. But I have to be honest. By paperwork and contracts, he's allowed to do that. Why? Because some of our African presidents, and I understand some of us may not know. Some of us may not be aware. And I'm not blaming you for that. And the reason I'm not blaming you because English was not our first language. But some of us may not be aware through the contracts that we are placed in, and we have placed the people that's under us in, those contracts relate under laws of commerce. Anything that relates to the laws of commerce with certain punctuality within the English grammar, it relates and forces us to operate back under the Pope. So that operation within the Pope of commerce gives the French president the power to say, well, if you're under our highest throne and crown, then you're still under me. Through legal lease, he can do that. And it goes back to the topic I said and mentioned earlier. It must be a separation from the business, commerce entity of who we are and the real, natural, nationality, sovereign person of the land who we are. It must be a separation of two. If it's combined, it will cause confusion amongst us and they're going to play off that. They're going to play off it. They, don't, they think that we don't know there's a separation of both. We have to apply that separation. We must do that. As soon as we possibly can, the greater the better. Because as countries and banks start to collapse, the dependency of to keep one country up is based upon the reinsurance of the contract they have that indebted another country. So what's going on in America is not just in America. This is going to be a domino global effect. This domino global effect is not just going to be the banks that's in America. This issue is going to start affecting every single bank in every continent. Especially depending on the debt and the deficit. So we got to have a clear understanding as Africans on a commercial financial level and a nationality sovereign level what's really going on. As these things continue to happen we must be in mental preparation and empowered preparation of ownership. If not, the indebtment of, for an example, on a large scale, if your country is still contracted by the help of another country, your economy will help their economy if their economy fails. On a small scale, as an individual, if you're still contracted under the government, and that government highest authority is the Pope. Just like Joe Biden's highest authority as a president is the Pope. As since the Pope is Joe Biden's king, therefore it makes the Pope the U.S. citizen's king as well. Black or white. So for us Africans, we need to know and understand that. And this applies to the other people or the other group of regime that we're dealing with conflict today. It also applies to them, the Muslim Arabs. So the Muslim Arabic crown and the European crown that will dominate us if we continue to operate under them and their paperwork and contracts. We must deliver ourselves from them and apply on the African sovereign crowns and African sovereign crowns only. That would be the only way to supersede 
and overpower the situations that's going to occur in the future. The laws will become more oppressed globally. And the laws will be forced to become more oppressed because of war globally. The higher stature of dictatorship, decisions, and judgment will be upon royal Only entities and comply in the future to commercial standards. And I believe that African people have that little confused with the African descent in America with the treatment. If the black Americans comply to being black, the commercial entity, and a white officer harm that black entity, it is not the black person's fault. It is not the police officer's fault. It is the individual who contracted that person to be a black entity. And that responsibility is the mother. It's not the white man's fault. So you actually cannot blame the Caucasian white man for doing what the mother said he can do. As harsh as it may sound, you got to go based off accuracy. Did the mother sign the birth certificate with or without the father present? Yes, she did. Did she sign her signature to accept the trade-off for her child to get government assistance, which forced the father out the home? And it also made that young boy grow to be a man with limited potential and limited access to resources? Yes, the mother did. So the mother has to be responsible for that. You can't comply with this system and then complain about it at the same time. You can't say you won't change, but then you want the assistance from the system at the same time. And this is why, amongst other multiple reasons, but that alone is the reason why I cannot work with a black American woman. Her ego says she already know everything, so she don't need me anyway. Africa, we need each other. I need you. And I'm hoping you see potential in my intellect so you can say, yes, we need the Nubians back. We need the Nubians with a collective group consciousness to come build with us. I'm ready. I think we're ready. But we cannot allow the outside sources to strategically apply reverse psychology on us and we cannot comply what we comply to and if it helps their benefit they're going to take advantage of us they're going to they're going to matter of fact anyone would we got to make the standards we're going to raise the bar and we're going to prove our statements not by just uttered words and great emotional speeches. Speeches are okay. But let me ask you people. African descent people. I'm asking you. All over Africa. Including my country. Which one you rather have? You want emotional great speeches. And that's it. Or you want someone who's going to come. Bring results. Bring facts bring a change, resolutions, and so you can say, okay, we can see a difference. Do you want to see a difference and believe it and it's tangible, or you just want to hear it to feel good for an hour or so, and then we go back to our same problems? I don't know what you decide today, but if you're thinking and you ponder like I ponder, we want results, we want actions, we want tangibles, we want solutions, we want facts, we don't want to guess. If you say you something that we claim as Africans, whether you're Jewish, 
Nubian, uh, Senegalese, Kenya, it don't matter. We're going to come with facts. We're going to come with measurements. And we're going to come with math and science to back it up. We can't just wake up one morning, black American people. We can't just wake up one day and say, oh, I choose to be this nationality today. I'm going to choose to be a Jew today. I'm going to choose to be from Congo today. I'm going to choose to be Nubian today. It's time out for that. We can't do guessing games when other ethnicities is using lies and tactics on our land. We got to start applying this with accuracy, science, mathematics, and proof. We want resolutional proof. We want solutions that's tangible. Are we going to do this? Are we going to do it accurately? Are we going to do it right? We're not going to play guessing games. We're time, time out for guessing games. We're done with that. We're going to do it with math and science and accuracy. They said they're part of Africa and they South African would tell them to genetically prove it and to let the numbers and the science speak for themselves. No more words. No more words. We want proof. If I have not got your attention for anything else over these years, you must admit whether you like me or hate me, love me or despise me, you cannot deny my work ethic. You cannot deny what I have proven that I will build in front of you. It's credibility. I have a digital and physical portfolio to confirm everything that I'm telling you. So we're not doing guessing games. That's for children. We are adults. And we're going to handle it like adults. We're going to come back stronger than we've ever been. As Africans, people of Kemet. And we will prolong this conversation more when it comes to the commercialism and our nationality and the empowerment of our sovereignty that connects to that. And it's a part of that attachment with our land. And everything on that land, under that land, is part of our sovereign attachments. <clears throat> Does it make sense to respect Russia's sovereignty, China's sovereignty, India's sovereignty, and then when it comes to us, we just oblivious? We just don't know what's going on? No! It doesn't make common sense, and we're not going to keep playing dumb. If you want to keep playing dumb, fine. Do it in your own space and territory. But I am more than willing to team up have conversations, more in private, more or less than public, but to have conversations and dialogue about our great continent. What can we do to bring, to produce? What can we do to build? I come from a lineage of builders, and we're going to continue to build. That legacy is not going to stop now. It started with pyramids, but it's not going to end with pyramids. We're going to continue our legacy to, to build more. In conclusion, I want our African people to be aware of these particular words in English language that have double meanings when it comes to law. If you bear with me, I will read you these words. They have double meanings. It's very important we understand these words within contracts and agreements before we comply or agree to entity. Semen, vessel, authority, parents, parents, birth, birth, spelled with I and birth spelled with the E. Bench, Bank, agent, principal, 
Constitution, Treaty, De Jour, De Facto, Divine, Mortgage, Mort, Mort of Death, Noble, Allodial, Estate, Status, Human Status, Hell, Performance, Ward, Trespass, Minority, Natural Justice, Law of Nature, Color of Office, Colored, Colored Person, Color Person, Commerce, Alliance, Secondary, Primary, Intercourse of Nations, Treaty of Peace, Treaty of Nations, Ordinances, Prize of Courts, Obituary, Free Persons, Land, Person, and Proper Person. These words that I mentioned to you is very important and strategic when those words are in all capital letters and when they are mentioned in contracts. They have double meanings within the English, the English language. Excuse me. I hope you found this message to be very beneficial. And to the Caucasian men, Caucasian American men, this is America. This is your country. I respect it to be your country. And I expect you independent to look at it that the Republic of Caucasian men and women wanted from the Europeans. It's the same independence that we wanted from Europe and the Arabs. Keep that in mind. And keep that in mind that the Muslim Arabs enslaved us before the Europeans. I understand our history. But I don't judge people based off the clear skin that we have over our flesh. I judge based off fairness, equal business, and respect. The Europeans and the Muslim Arabs been our invaders and colonizers for a long time, and they're still our main issue. I understand the history of the Caucasian man. It was not perfect, but as time went on, out of all of us African descents, the black Americans, they started getting better treatment more than any of us. Me and our people still enslaved by the Arabs. Some of our people still enslaved by the Europeans. But the Caucasian American man abolished slavery. He was a Republican, Abraham Lincoln. These Caucasian men, whether they tell you African leaders or not, they make sure that these black Americans get a tax return, a big lump sum of money every year. And they make sure they get a check. They can't complain too much about the American system if they still depending on it. I don't depend on the American system. I don't talk down about the American system unless it's Democrats and their policies and how they treat you. I don't like how the Democrats treat us here and I don't like how the Democrats treat my African fellow leaders that I respect so much and our excellences. I want you to understand the difference between the Democrat Caucasian people and the Republican Caucasian people. The Republican Caucasian people instilled in black and African descent men to be independent, build on your own, be disciplined. But the African Americans who vote for Democrats every four years, they don't instill family structure. They instill have the male out the home, 
let society raise the young boy or the young girl and make sure the mother get government assistance. So it appears to y'all that maybe the black woman is doing better. No. She's in a great amount, in a great ordeal of debt through contracts. She's not educated about. And she sacrificed her child. She traded her child. And the black community for family structures. The black woman has traded their child for that. So they can have egotistical self-success. Not independency. They have no idea what being independent is. Because if they would, they would not need the assistance of the system or the ecosystem that the white man has built. So when you're independent like I claim to be, you don't depend on everybody else's ecosystem. You create, you build and develop ecosystems. You don't say you're independent and then expect the white man to give you a check for a tax return. Because now you're complying within their system. They can't complain about a system that they're still benefiting from. I want you to know, your excellencies and presidents, when I come to bring me and my thoughts and my strategic plans to the table, and I'm hoping that you accept me, and I hope you see me as a peer and a fellow African descent, as well as a Nubian. I want you to know I'm not coming with the money that the Caucasian man has given me. They don't give me money, and that's why the Republicans, Caucasian, respect me so much. Because I'm not begging for their money. I understand. There is business here in America, and we're supposed to take care of business to build back the home you're from. So, I hope this was very beneficial to whoever seen it, but it was intended for the excellencies in Africa, the African leaders, the African presidents, and some Caucasian people who's like-minded like me. I hope we really got more of a clear understanding and we let this immature reverse psychology foolishness let it fade behind us. We in the 20th century, it's a new day, it's a new time. Can we use science, mathematics, accuracy, solutions, tangibles, facts, we don't want just great emotional speeches. And please, again, I say this with love, black Americans. No offense, but if you respect the Jews when they say you need to genetically prove who you are, it's the same with me. I don't claim to be black American. Please don't claim to be new Because if you were, you would have been, had a conversation with me. And you would have helped me and my people and the ecosystem that we have built. I don't say that with a heart and heart. I say that with an open mind so we can be mature and have dialogues. We're not going to get nowhere not having a mature dialogue. So let's put the color of the skin, let's put that nonsense behind us. That's childish. The black and white thing, we know what it is now. It's commercialism or nationality. Which one we go choose? Let's put that childish stuff behind us. This one more South African than that one? Let's stop this. Let's use math and science, measurements, and let's put the childish stuff behind us. Let's stop being childish. Let's stop applying. Let's stop helping them apply reverse psychology. We have great brains. Our God, or I like to say in Swahili, Mungu. Our Mungu blessed us with phenomenal brains. Let's apply it. Let's use it. Let's be strategic. Let's control our situations. Please. Aksante.
Gracias. Bye bye. Thank you.